Yay! Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, let me change that. Sarah! Hi, Mike. I gotta change this. <laughs> Sarah! Yay! Hi! Hold on real quick. Hi. Okay. I have, oh my God, I have again. That's glare, huh? No good. One more time. Is that better? I think so. <laughs> what a dork. Yes. <laughs> oh, you have it too, see? I know. We're in our offices. Offices. Let me see. I'm legit on my bed right now. <sighs> I had to go run to the, um, the laundry room and the kitchen. I'm cooking my uh, meals for the weekend. Glare. I do that on Sundays. Sundays. What is today? Oh, it's Friday. Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Oh, okay. Let me see. Where is that one coming from? Okay. Oh, yeah. I saw Mike is in there already. Hi, Mike. Hi. Who's in here? Hi. Blue Collar Sisters. Oh, hi, guys. Hi. We'll wait for a couple of minutes. Oh, did we actually just talk until the minute of? <laughs> I love it. I think a minute after. Sorry. Sorry, guys. And yes, I do have my little notes here. Okay. Oh, goodness. What did you cook for dinner? Broccoli soup. Broccoli soup? That sounds so good. It's my mom's recipe. It was delicious. That sounds yum. It was. I'm to get the glare out. Wait. Is that light? Okay. Should I show it <laughs> worked out. <laughs> here we go perfect that's just super professional i gotta get bob in here like hey how's this work i can't get away let me see there you go done oh yeah lighting holy moly hi <laughs> there is it all shadows i don't care we can see you that's what matters Yes. So, dude, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You're um, welcome. So, okay, so the whole point of Welding Women Syndicate is I want to highlight some of the women that I admire in the industry. And uh, not too long ago, well, I don't know, over a year now. Yeah. Maybe even before the fire. I don't really necessarily know when you had come out with your story, and I'm not going to say it because I want you to talk about it. But um, there was, like, one very poignant moment when I had, like, like really related to you because you went – did you see that? No. What? Oh, it just said I barely went live. Whatever. I've been live. <laughs> Anyhow, so I had seen that you had went um, public with your story, and it was something that um, I related to, and I admired the heck out of it because um, – you're such a strong woman and being in the welding industry as a woman, it's just hard period. So it was nice that you had a different um, perspective. So with that being said, I want to kind of explain who you are, you know, um, how did you enter the welding industry? And we want like, we got an hour girl. So we want to hear it all. Hey girl. Waving. Okay. So how did you get into this, the welding industry? What is your, okay. uh, what's your, your story? So I feel like to answer that, I got to start at the beginning, okay. which is back in 2010. And I had a really bad heroin addiction and I was making horrible choices. And I found myself in county jail facing a five-year prison sentence. Wow. And I was sent to prison and I did a lot while I was there. Like I went to actual college, Medi College, while I was there for three years but um, you have to pick a prison job, mm -hmm. and they had an industry program, and all the women at this prison make all the trash cans and the grills for New York State parks and any, like, state-owned property. The women make them there. They make, like, the signs and stuff, too. It's called the industry program, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. they welded there and painted. They did everything, and... Both my brothers were welders. My stepdad was a welder. And welding also happened to pay the most at 38 cents per hour. So I was like, let's try welding. Right. 
and it wasn't much. It was like small stitch welds or um, tack welding. It wasn't anything too serious, but I really liked it. And I told myself the rest of my prison sentence, like when I get out, I'm just going to go to welding school and that's what I'm going to do. So I got out a year early. I did four years out of five because of good time and because of college. So I got out in September and I got a job at the mall at Burlington Coat Factory. I was a cashier and the manager really liked me. And so she quickly made me the accountant of that store, Mm -hmm. surprisingly. But so I did that at night. And um, that February is when the next welding class started. It was a six month program. I went five days a week. I'm pretty sure it's like eight or eight and a half hours a day. We started out with stick welding and then MIG welding, all sorts of MIG welding, like aluminum spool and all that. And then TIG welding. And then if if you advance far enough, you could do a little open root and pipe. Yes. And I did really well in school. <laughs> I was at the top of the class. I yes. was flying through the tests. Um, I'm really close with my welding instructor still to this day. Um, so the last month of school was an internship and my teacher hooked me up with this place that makes industrial laundry equipment. So for a month I interned there for free. I wasn't getting paid and I worked at the mall Mm -hmm. and they must've liked me because they hired me and that's where I work still. Oh, that's where you work currently. That is so cool. Yes. And that's how I got into welding. Wow. Like I would never, and it's funny because, you know, I think we all, I, I'll say for myself, we, I, I just didn't expect that story from you. I was completely blown away with the you. fact that what, there's no way, no way. And I love your story because you're so honest about it. And it, you know, it's kind of a different perspective because for one, I didn't know that your your family also did it. Two, no one would have known that you had that type of, like, background. Like, I just would never have called yeah. it on you. You know what I mean? I don't think, no. I mean, I don't even know if I know too many people that have ever, like, recovered from heroin addiction. So that's insane. So congratulations on that. Like, Thank you. I'm so glad because now I have a woman to be inspired by, and I appreciate that. Thank um, you. Hold on. I'm just trying to say hey because they're, like, coming through, dude. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. I can cut. Yeah, Try great. Thank you, money. Hi, guys. Um, Hi, guys. Let me see. I'm looking at notes right now. Hang tight. Tell you. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, just. Okay, we got through that. Oh, okay. So, obviously, it's changed your life. Um, so, yeah. And I, oh, man, that's very cool. So, how, like, have you... I didn't expect you to say like the same company. I was kind of expecting to say that you had to go like, that's very fortunate of you. So they, so, okay. So we'll kind of get into what we're talking about on the phone. Um, When you got out, was that like a program that was within the prison system that they offered to you or was that through their college? Like, how did that work going into the schooling? Was that something that they kind of like led you into? Or is that something like, you know what? I did it in prison. I'm going to continue on with it. Yeah, that's something I did on my own, Mm -hmm. but I, when I left prison, I did leave with a certificate. It Mm -hmm. says nothing about prison, and it just says, it says, like, how many hours I did of, like, each, like, there's a section for, like, tech welding and and certain machines that I operated, and it's, like, New York State, like, certified, and that, that could count, like, towards, like, my work didn't need that, but, like, say I was applying for a new welding job, like, I could put that in my resume, and that would actually count for something, so that was, like, I guess a, a good program, like, you, you had to be um, following the rules and stuff within the system to, like, sure. even, even do that program, so that's how that worked, and then when I got home, I just looked up, like, where the the local schools were. And then there, I feel like there weren't that. I feel like there was only like two or three. So I just went with the one that was most in depth. Now you are in Syracuse area. Is that correct? Yes. In New York. Yeah. What was the school? If you can say it, I don't even know if that's. Okay. It was called BOCES. BOCES. Bo- BOCES. And B O C E S. And it's all capital letters. Okay. And I don't know what it stands for, but it's BOCES. <laughs> I love your honesty. It's awesome. Um, 
But if you're in the area, people, and you're looking to get into the welding industry and you want to go to school, so that's something you guys can look up. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of part of this whole thing is I want someone who's in your state, in your general location, if they're trying to get into the welding industry or want to pursue education or have perhaps gotten into trouble, you know, these are some paths that they could have. So there's resources that you're giving them. You know what I mean? So yeah, every, I'm not trying to interrupt you, but I just kind of want to make sure nope. this is in the video. I have video. a few. Um, that's why I wanted to have the call. Cause there's going to be like random, like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Let me see. I'm reading too. Um, while I'm looking at my notes, you guys, if you have any questions, please feel free as if we see them, um, we'll ask her and I'm trying to wave at you guys. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, hi, hi. Okay. Great story. I'm Love trying people. to block the light with my head. You're what? <laughs> trying to block the light with my head. Oh, right here, here. I know. Let me see how the program worked. You went through that. So on. Thank you. Oh, okay. Here was a question. It says, uh, what would you tell someone right now that has had a similar journey? Someone who may have been an addict or someone who went to the prison system. Like, did you, were you forthright when you were going through schooling or like when you were looking for a job? Were you like honest about what had happened? Yes, because I feel like they're going to ask her and may find out anyway. And sure. honestly, I don't know, like, why I've been, like, so honest. But, like, thinking back, like, before I even went to school, there was, like, an open house. And I got to, like, meet the instructor and look at the classroom or whatever. Yeah. And I had told him straight up, like, hey, I just got out of prison. And this is what I already know and this and that. So I was truthful with him. And then when I applied at the Burlington job. They did a background check, but I feel like it was never brought up. And if they don't ask, I don't say anything. Right. No, that makes sense. You know? And then the job that I have now, I put on the box, yes, don't ever lie. But when it asks what you did, I put open to discuss in person. And that way they can't just read it and like make an sure. assumption, you know? So how did I that think, conversation go? I was up in the office and mind you, they had already gotten to know me for a month. It was like after the internship that I had to give my resume and do an interview. Mm -hmm. And I, I just told him like, listen, I have a felony on my record. Is that going to be a problem? And he didn't even ask like about details and stuff. He just said that that was okay. And I know that my job hires a lot of other felons too and both i feel like my brothers i hate to like put them on blast but i feel like they they also have felonies and you know they're in the union i just i feel like it's a blue collar i feel like it's like more accepting of that sure i found at least well and it's fun. the only reason why i ask is because i've had several friends who have gone through the system and um they were not necessarily as um welcomed as generously you know what I mean so that's why I'm like how did that it issue. go because it seems like yeah once you let somebody know that you have some type of felony um they they just completely gonna they're gonna judge you you know like like yeah. you just killed somebody on you know come on I mean I'm not justifying anything you know what I mean but at least hear the person out so yeah exactly hey girl there's Missy hi girl hi I'm trying to wave I probably ah me and technology we don't get along that's cool i i like the fact that there wasn't that much pushback you know what i mean i see a question and it says did you get financial aid for welding school or how oh, affordable yeah. was the boces program i did get financial aid um the boces program at least when i went which would be five or six years ago now I believe the entire class was seven thousand dollars, and because I was right out of um, prison, and like my taxes showed that like I hadn't worked the past few years, whatever, I got like the max aid, and that was five thousand dollars. And then I was blessed enough that my father helped me cover the other two. But there are programs, and I remember the name. It's called Vested. That's what it used to be called. I'll have to look up what it's called now, but it's vocational and educational services for individuals with disabilities. And this one only applies actually to um, drug addiction. They consider drug addiction a disability. Sure. I forgot. I just thought of that. Thank but um, they'll help you like pay for gas, pay for your boots, helmet, all that stuff. At least they did 
five years ago. Right. I'll, I'm going to do some research and I'm going to get some current links for everybody and uh, make sure every, all that's still accurate. Right. No. And I appreciate that. That was part of the reason why I had the, the, um, you know, initial phone call. Cause I didn't want to put you on the spot. Like, Oh crap. That, so I, and I'm not trying to have you do homework, but I'm, I'm happy I thought of it. You've been really um, open and honest about your journey. And so like, in my opinion, if you have taken this journey, like it just seems like someone could benefit off of what you've done. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. So, and I know like, I'm not familiar with your state. So you, you know, better than anybody obviously would, you know, hopefully, or you use some type of resources, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mike says honesty is everything. I agree. I completely Me too. agree. Me too. I love it. That was a good question. Yes, it was. Yeah, I love it. All right, hold on. I got to look for the notes. Is that Letty? Hi. <laughs> I'm just going through real quick. Wave, wave, wave. Are you able to wave? You can wave. I'll look at questions. Let me see. How do you oh, wave? There should be a little. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I see like a smiley face. Oh, no, there should, it says wave on the right of the names. Do you see that? Right. No. 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 <laughs> okay. I'm waving. <laughs> Got the waves. Anywho. So, um, at least with my experiences, there was a uh, certain tendencies, like addictive tendencies that you had to like kind of overcome when you're getting over an addiction has welding helped you in any way with overcoming these addictions? I would say absolutely, because I feel like school and then work, it just like put me on a schedule. Sure. And I feel like that's very important, having something to do and not having idle time. And it just like put structure yeah. in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and then once I started making money, to me, that was money that I had never really made before. Mm -hmm. So I was buying a car that was like my dream car. I bought yeah. my dogs. And then once you get things, it's like, look at all that I have to lose. Sure. You know? So that's kind of how that worked. Yeah. That's a good answer. That, that's really yeah. smart. Let me see. Oh, it says, have you ever found welding to be therapeutic for you? You know, sometimes yes. in those like wild COVID days, I'm just saying like, it has been one heck of a year. Um, Oh my God. Even the best of us have become stressed out or uncharacteristic or lean toward things that they shouldn't have necessarily, you know, maybe not drinking or drugs, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because I've seen a lot of my friends who have gone back to, you know, poor decisions. So yeah. has welding helped you in that way? I would say absolutely. It's, there's just something about like having a machine or whatever you're working on all tacked up and it's just ready to weld and you got your headphones in and, you're ready to rip. It's just therapeutic. I feel like there's really no other word. Yeah. There's no BS. It's just you and the machine. Yeah. I always yeah. say like, I just really like welding because I guess coming from a retail background, like I like that I'm not dealing with the public <laughs> and I don't want to come off like I can't work in a team because I can work in a team. I just really like that. It's just me and the welder yeah. and the machine and that's it, you know, and I can just like get in my groove and do my own thing. I really like that. Yeah. Hold on. Oi. Sorry. Hi baby. Is that your puppy? I'm waving. Yeah. I'm waving. I'm waving. Jackson. What? What's your dog's name? Jackson. <gasps> that's my dog's name. Say hi Jackson. How cute. I love him. For real, it's Jackson? Jackson and Bear and Sprucket. How cute. I love it. Let me see. Why did you... Oh, why did you choose to be so public about your story? Um, You know, for a long time, I would have never said anything and just hoped that people wouldn't know. But then I had just gotten out of a toxic relationship and then a while after I met my husband now and as things got more serious I just kind of like always wondered if his friends knew or if his family knew because it's a not to say it's a small town it's not too small but you know like 
people, people know people. Sure. And it was, that was just always kind of in the back of my head. And I just like always thought that like maybe people secretly judge me or everyone hates me. And then when I kind of got into like a more healthy spot, I was just like, I'm just going to put it all out there because this is like something to celebrate. And the worst thing that might happen is that it might inspire somebody else who has been there because it's hard. It really is hard. Like, yeah. So many of the women I was in prison with now are, like, either passed away, still doing drugs, or just, like, in and out of prison. And I don't know. I just, like, sometimes don't know how I got so lucky because, like, you you just don't see it that often. Sure. Dang. It's sad. It is sad. But I'm glad you're here. I appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm trying to go through. Hey, girl. What hey, beautiful hey. legs you have. What? Neither of us are showing our legs. <laughs> What's it like in your shop with the guys? That's what Mike says. That's AZ. I love it. I mean, there was a time I had a boss, like, I'm going to say he was my boss for at least like two years. And he just like made me so uncomfortable. Like oh. he would do things like call my name from across the shop floor and make me walk over there because he's like my boss you know i gotta go like figure out what he wants yeah just to go shut up sarah or he'd walk by my area like with someone else and just go like shut up sarah and just like what stupid stuff like that yeah so like i Is hate well better than him? yes <laughs> i mean he, <laughs> yes my well did look better than his but <laughs> i would just do my okay. best to avoid him but then it got to a point like where he like crossed the line i i didn't want confrontation and i didn't want to be the reason that someone like lost their job yeah. you know what i mean that made me feel bad but it crossed the line when he like invited me to his house and his wife was going to be gone and like made some really sleazy comments so i finally said something and he was fired so when he was my boss i hated my job mm -hmm. but now that he's gone I have a really good relationship with the boss I have now and I get along with like everyone else on the shop floor. And I, I really like where I work and everyone. They're great. Do they tease you about your TikToks? Yes. My <laughs> boss does. No, they don't. Do they follow you? Ananda. I love him though. I love him. He teases me on everything. Oh really? But it's in a, it's yes. in a nice way. He's not like, Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah. I like that. I know um, Mike actually asked a question before. He kind of jumped the gun, but that's okay. Like, that's I, I like the fact that you have a really healthy work environment. Yes, me too. And do they know, like, your background? My job? Yeah. Yes. Your coworkers, obviously your boss, but. Yes. Yep. Well, because they're all on my social media. Oh, sure. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But I, I would say, honestly, like, my boss knows, like, almost like every detail of my life. Wow. <laughs> I mean, because before he was my boss, we were just coworkers, you know, and to think of it, like there were times like you're next to this person, like 10, 11 hours and then, and then four hours on Saturday, you know, you get just as close to them. So he's, I'd say he's more than a coworker to me. Like he is genuinely my friend and oh, I love that. you know, yeah, I love him. I love him. That's he's a such very a big good group. question. Did you see this one? Have you ever worked with another female welder? Yes, we have. Um, let me count. There is one, two. I'm going to say there's at least three other four female. <gasps> no, actually, we just hired two more. There's like five or six of us, actually. Oh, that's really. so cool. Yeah. That Honestly, that that's amazing to me because in all almost 10 years, just being in and out of automotive shops, big structural school, um, teaching. I've had two, two, and that's from Arkansas to California. So yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. I love that. Absolutely love. Me that. too. Um, now let's get into that then a little bit. For anybody, any woman out there who's actually contemplating uh, getting into the welding industry, or is like maybe just uh, piqued her curiosity by seeing this interview. What is some type of um, advice that you could give her? I would just say, like, just 
do it. I was so nervous about going to welding school. Like in my head, I was like, what are all these guys going to think? Or, you know what I mean? I was just nervous about it. Like, or am I capable? But I don't know what was in me, but I just did it. And I followed through and I showed up every day and I worked hard and I proved myself and I really didn't have any problems. Everyone treated me great in welding school. Like I had made all that up in my head, you know, like, Oh, for nothing. No, they were fine. I think the only issues I really get. Have you talked what? to other women who have had like? I. It seems like that's funny. I've never heard that that many women in like one area. I promise. And maybe ironwork is a little bit different, and that'll be another um, interview. But like, it it seems like there's obviously a lacking of women in the industry. So yeah, I'm I'm actually very impressed. Whoever, it's whatever been, they're this doing is like over there, <laughs> they need to do more they, around here. I was like, when I went to welding school, I was the only female. Yeah. And then my instructor has told me like, since then it's been increasing more and more. And my job takes a lot of the students from BOCES. That's like a thing they do with the interns. And, and, um, we just got two more girls. So I just got another girl in my department. There might even be more of us. And I know that, um, one's actually leaving. So there is a lot of us. It's increasing recently. And that also makes me happy. That makes me happy too. Do you think that there's something, I mean, you might not see it then cause you have more women with you, but do you think that there's something that we, we can do aside from, you know, making public stories about like our journeys through welding? Do you think that there's something that your schooling could have done on, you know, marketing wise or like your job could have done, you know, to encourage women to come? And not just, you know what, I, okay, so let me say it like this. I know there's the EOC, right? But I don't necessarily like the fact that sometimes you're going to get hired because you're a woman. How about because, you know, like, uh, you know, you can weld also well, but like other women who are not necessarily in the industry, like what would be enticing for them to get into your job? You know what I mean? As a woman. <sighs> That's a tough question. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is a tough question because I feel like, I know there wasn't really anything back then. I know that my school just asked, they want to put like a picture of me with my story in their catalog to entice people. But I know you had said like without, without um, saying your story. So other than that, I can't, I mean, the only thing for me, I don't know. No, no, no. That's actually good though. You know, I think to be like the face of something, knowing that you worked your ass off to get into that position, it's not because just because you're a woman, you know, they're not yeah. just going to take that picture because you're a woman. So to see yeah. more women in like marketing materials or to see more women in your position or just more people being more public about, you know, yes, I'm a welder and I work in a shop or yes, I'm a welder and I teach. Yeah. Yes, I'm a welder. I work on a pipeline. Just more people coming out and saying, yes, I do this. And I absolutely love it. You know, I mean, yeah. like marketing materials, schooling, like I like to see more, like I get the Fabricator magazine and whenever I see like a woman's story, I'm like, oh yeah, this is what we need, you know, more highlighting. Like I love the skills. I love the, the journeys. I love making it a more normal conversation. So, yes. I agree. I'm trying to wave, 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 say hi. <laughs> I, I, I wave. I'm su- I'm surprised you did not see the little wave function. Are you on um an iPhone? No. Oh, your Android? Yeah. Oh, Android. Let me see. So Mike said I wish one day would just be known as welders, not girls or boys. Soon. I I truly believe that. Yeah. I just posted up a rant today. <laughs> yeah. We're all welders. I don't care yes. what you do. You're welding. You may lean one way or another, but, you know, you're welding. So are you on any of those Facebook groups? Which Facebook groups? Oh, my God. <laughs> are you real? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. What the weird comments. Okay. I was distracted. I'm sorry. Oh my word. Anywho. So <laughs> I was on a group um, and I randomly go onto Facebook because like, 
I just, I don't like it. It's not my favorite platform. Anywho, so I was on there and it was something to the effect of, um, I don't know, the, they were talking, they were actually talking about Barbie and, uh, they were talking about how she's not a real welder, you know, she's an artist, she doesn't count. And I was thinking like, what? Like you, are you kidding me? I Who are you that. to judge anybody, you know, like what makes you so special? I mean, she's done all these fantastic things. She's not a welder. Why? I and she knows that. a ton about welding. Like, what do you mean? She she uses a welder like every single day. How is she not a welder? Well, I don't, and here's I don't the think. crappiest part about it. It was another woman, you know. So, I'm just not gonna. Oh, that like stings my heart. I I don't get it. You know what I mean? Nor and I'm not gonna watch it either. So I just jumped out of the group. And I was yeah. Like, Peace. This is why I'm just not a fan. So, and, and I know it's not everybody in the group, but it's not the first time I've seen that type of hateful bashing on women. Oh, As a woman, I hate it. You know I what I mean? So that. I'm just not into it. And so, peace out, sister. So, yeah, that was my random rant. Hey, girl, I'm waving. I'm trying to wave. So, let me see. I'm going back to my notes. Oh, 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 oh. I know what I wanted to talk about. Um, Apprentice, local. Okay, so you said that you will get, um, like, links um for college and we'll put those up later on after yeah so we can do a little more yeah because i know it used to be called vested v-e-s-i-d and that stands for vocational and educational services for individuals with disabilities yeah but it's not what it's called anymore but i know it's in the same building as parole i know okay. it's the top floor of the parole building right okay so that's something that people can go to if they're getting out of jail and they want to have Sometimes. Thank you, Missy. What'd she say? I will say it again. Looks have nothing to do with your skills, boy No, girl. they do not. No, they do not. Because you don't normally, well, I don't normally wear makeup well. <laughs> Can't. Nope. It just melts. Let me see. Tell us about your, oh, how about you talk to us a little bit about your partnership with Dynabraid? Is that something that you can oh, talk okay. about? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So let me see what I'd like or to Or whatever say. it is. Um, I am a Dynabraid influencer, is what they call it. So, mm -hmm. I really liked it because when they approached me, I had already been using Dynabraid tools, like, for the past six years. That's that. Those are the tools that my work provides for us, and they're quality tools. So, that was important to me if I'm going to um, advertise or show off, you know, or... I don't, I hate the word influencer, but I'm trying to think of the word. <laughs> it's a trendy. You know, if, yeah, if I'm going to use their, if I'm going to use their tools, I feel like it's important that I'm telling the truth and that I really do like the products. And um, also all of their, they have, they have two lines. One's more for work, like an industrial line. And then they have the nitro series line mm -hmm. and that's the die grinder and the 90 degree grinder that I show on my stories a lot. Yeah. Those are more meant for, they're not meant for like eight hours of use a day. They're more for home use and their industrial line is all made in the USA, which cool. I really like them too. I guess yeah. their nitro series is, um, what was the word she used? Imported. And everything is made in clearance, New York, which is not, far from me i'm actually going there on thursday okay and i'm going to um be getting a lot of content and sharing on my stories yep. and we have a lot of tools set up and it's gonna be really cool and i'm really excited so is there actually something going on your page pretty quick here yes i'm doing a giveaway soon as soon as i hit 10k which i still can't even believe that there's like that many people interested in my life, you know what I mean? So I'm you have a, a very good story, Sarah. Why do you say that? Like so I don't know. that's exactly why I was so like I, I gravitated toward you is like she's actually like telling the public this. Like so many people would just like tuck their heads and go, you know what I mean? Like it, you you've like overcome so much. You should be so very proud of yourself. Like I people want to see thinking. that they're living vicariously through you. You have to know this. And if I'm I think to I'll start to cry. 
Well, it is true. I mean, it absolutely is. You know, not everybody is as strong to actually get through what you have done. And I totally commend you. And what do you have, what, almost 10 years? It'll be 10 years on December 17th of this year. That's just days after my birthday. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yay. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow, dude. Congratulations on that. Thank you. That's that's huge. 10 years is that's amazing. I'm so proud yeah, of you. Time flies. Time is flying. Aw. So great to see you, Sarah. Proud of you. It's Thank you. Johnny. That's Johnny J. Um, f let's see. Sparks, whatever. Folks coming out Thank of you. incarceration are some of my best students every time. Aw. Yeah. And you were top of your class, correct? Thank you. Yes. I'd say there was me and two other guys who were speeding through the test. Like, we were, like, because there's, like, different levels, you know, different tests. And we were we were the ones passing them the fastest and who had the most. But actually, at the end, I feel like I, tru I truly learned the most in my internship, hands-on. And the yeah. test really, not to say the test didn't mean anything, but if I could go back now, I wouldn't have focused so much on the test. And I would have gotten more involved in the hands-on and side projects that they were doing. Mm -hmm. But I was just, like, laser eye on the test. Yeah. But, you know, you live, you learn. And uh, I, I learned most of my internship with, like, hands-on. I feel like I just went off on a tangent there. No, Maybe. that's fine. I was just going to ask you, like, <laughs> what exactly did you have to do for your internship? I I feel like I just, like, showed up like a regular employee. And I worked um, – he, he's not there anymore, but I worked under this guy. Call him, like, an old-timer. He I'm trying, I, don't, I don't really know how old he is, but he was just, like, so laid back. Some people didn't like him. He thought he was a grump. It, I don't know if it's because he had daughters, but he was always very kind to me, and he would just help me, you know, like, yeah. show me the blueprint and teach me how to build, and, and that was that. Do you think it's important for someone getting into the industry or – Maybe they don't even know they're going to get into the industry, but even as just coming into working in a shop, do you think it's important for you to have like a mentor like that? Someone to kind of guide your way, kind of teach you like the tips and tricks of being in a shop? I think so for sure. Cause I always say that it, I give all props to my welding instructor and my boss, Mickey, that was his name. And I called him Mick dog. I get I, like if it wasn't for them, I think that's very important. Yeah. And I like that they were older, you know. I just feel like I respected, I respected what he had to say, and I don't know. I, I yeah, I think that's important for sure. Aww, uh, Mike said I follow both of you ladies. Very inspiring from day one. You ladies inspired. So Mike is actually he's like um, I don't know he, he's like one of my mentors. Like if I Aww. have anything to do with like aluminum, I go to him. I just, yeah. I, I go to him just to talk like, oh my God, you know, like he, he's been there for years, years. Aww. I love that. It, I think it's very <laughs> <he's> stupid. <laughs> Old guys rule. We love you guys. <laughs> Yay. You're funny. Let me see. Also know the last two guys to run the world program at Folsom prison and know there's some solid training there. If you're lucky enough to get it, wish I saw more welding and women's facilities. That's funny that you're saying that. So we may be working on that. Can you, oh my good grief. <laughs> what is the deal with these comments? Sorry guys. I know, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's talk about that one a little bit. So I was um on your page and you were going kind of off on a little bit of a tangent. Some dude had or whomever, I don't even know if it was a dude, it was someone had messaged you, I think it was in DM or whatever whatever it was. Um they were commenting on your looks, something, something, and he was being a total douchebag. Anyhow, is that, how do you, how do you handle that on Instagram? Oh, it's so frustrating. And honestly, it's like, I don't really get it in real life. Like <laughs> men are like everyone at work, you know, treats me like for the most part. And it's just like mostly on Instagram. And I, it's like, I don't know if it like makes men insecure. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. But he had said something like, we get it, you're, bl you're blonde and you weld. And I just didn't. What does that have to do with one thing or another? Like, how do you feel when people, like, come at you like that? I mean, I feel like maybe a few years ago that would have really 
bothered me, but now that I'm like in a healthier mindset, like I I don't let it ruin my day and I just block someone like that, you know? Clearly they're insecure. Look at like why else upset, would they you dropped better dimes. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like like <sighs> Half the time, these people don't even, like, he had said something else. I forget what he said. But it's just, like, they don't even go to my page and, like, see what else I have to offer, you know, besides one picture. Like, my whole right. point of, like, my, like, I don't want to call it, like, my brand, but, like, the whole message I'm putting out there is that you can be a girly girl yeah. and wear makeup and cute clothes and you can weld. Yeah. You know, that's like my whole point. Yeah. Yeah. And who are you to like, you know, like, t I just, I don't get it. I don't understand, but that's their problem and definitely not mine. <laughs> yeah. No, I can, <laughs> don't worry. I'll go ahead and block them too. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll go ahead and spam them. I have no problem them. hitting that block button. <laughs> I love that block button. <laughs> Me too. Oh my goodness. I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm having a good one with this one. Um, let me see. I think we kind of already talked about that. It says advice for women in general if they're thinking about entering the industry. Oh, just do it. We, we already talked about that. Um, how about women you admire? So, like I was telling you, I had like when I found your page, I was all over it. Like, I love it. I love the fact that you not only are you walking the walk. You're talking the talk, but, you know, you can post pretty pictures. You can post dirty pictures. I love the fact that you're very just open and honest. So, like, who are women to you in the industry that you follow that you, like, resonate with? There are a few that come to mind instantly, and you're definitely one of them. Because I, I, I can't think of how long we've been talking now. I feel like it's – I feel like it was, like, pretty soon after the fire. And I don't know if it was, like, your daughter who I followed first or something. Oh, my God. But I, I remember that's how I met you was like through through seeing that or, or it was soon after. And I just feel like the conversations we've had, I'm not going to say your business, but I've just like seen you grow as a person and I can just yeah. like tell that you're so much happier now. I could almost cry a little bit and that you're like, Don't you're make me cry. Cool. <laughs> that's so awesome. You know, that that's like so cool. That's something I would love to do. And then also, I don't know if anyone knows Miss DeWalt. She oh, has a yeah. TikTok. That's where I first found her. And then I feel like I, I was just like stalking her page and I like went off on a tangent like on her YouTube. Yeah. Just the story she shared about like her, her husband passed and she turned something like so sad into something so great, you know, and, and that was similar like, all our stories are just similar, like, taking hard circumstances and turning sure. it into something great. And she taught herself how to use all those tools and just look at her now. It's like, yeah. she's thriving. And then also, um, Brianna Blair. Yes. I'm pretty sure is her. Brianna? Brie? I know that she she's blossomed into, like, a, a happier person recently too and it's just it's great you know yeah. seeing all these women like find themselves and you can just tell you know when someone's like truly happy and in a better place and I think it's great because in real life I don't have many female friends and right. I just had to like, cut off a really close friend recently just I don't know just they're it's toxic sometimes was she a welder and, she is. We actually, yeah. I don't want to go into too much oh, detail okay. about that. No, no, no. She is. But, um, I just, I really, res it, other friends too, men too. But I just, I really like that on Instagram, the community of women and yeah. friends that I've met here. It's just been like nothing but supportive and awesome. And right. I have so many girlfriends I can just, you know, talk to. It's awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, see, <laughs> it has someone trying to get that one off. Yeah, Women in the world are awesome. I agree. I'm trying to say hi. I'm trying to say some. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not trying to ignore. <laughs> don't mess with Welder Mafia. Am I wearing? No, I thought I was wearing the shirt. I know. I am not. It's over there. Sorry, guys. In college, the little goth girl was out welding me. She taught me plenty. Did you feel insecure, though? 
Come on, be honest. Did I? No, no, no. It's Mad Pumpkin 13. Somebody says oh, I see, I see. he or she, I don't know who they are. In college, the little goth girl was out welding me. She taught me plenty. That's cool. I had one. It was one that I actually welded with in college, and then I ended up working with her. So that was the one. And then I've had one in welding class. Teaching. Yeah, what right now? Uh, no, not right, right now. now. That was it was the last course. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this one. Waving. Waving. <laughs> yeah, they're going off. <laughs> That's good. Thank you guys. Such weirdos. I don't get it. Um Okay, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to like send them through. I'm trying to like read yeah. them as we go through. But is there anything that you want to touch upon? Um, I don't know. I can't. I can't. I'm trying to think. Are you? Uh, I know what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about your little side table. Did you finish that table? Oh, not yet. I have to. I took a, a pallet from work. Yeah. And I really like when they have like the stamps on them. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like they'll have like the little labels burnt into them or whatever. And uh, I feel like I need my husband's help putting the, the tops together because I'm, I only know how to like refinish wood. I'm not really good. Like I just need his assistance, like show me how to do it. So we've been busy. So that's something we got to maybe on Sunday we'll yeah. get out in the garage. And I just want to make some, we have a king bed and our bedroom's not that big. So the tabletops can't be too big. So they're not going to be anything huge but that's what i i, I want to put those together and stain them and then attach them to those bases somehow i love how the bases turned out yeah oh i laughed because the other day i went to go visit another college and i had two of the reels in the back of my truck and so i was laughing like i never even thought of using them as a little table there's another project that they're going to go into i'm going to make a mask <laughs> so there you go I was, like, I was laughing like hey because we you know we there's 10 students in each class so you know go through the wire like really quick and uh yeah I was just laughing like hey hey what are we gonna do with these ones but they already have a purpose if I actually get to them you know um now do you weld at home I have a welder and I bought it like over a year ago but our last house was we didn't have a garage. I had really oh, nowhere nice. to weld. So I kept saying when we move here, because now we have a big two-car garage, but we moved last winter, and then it was just like the holidays, and then yeah. summer came, and then we got a bow, and we were doing that. But but my husband's brother is coming over tomorrow morning, because he yes. knows electric, and they're getting it all set up. And I cannot wait to start making like little artsy-fartsy stuff. Good. And I yeah. say that, but, like, I have all my welders here, and I just, I don't. I haven't for a couple of months. It's just I go in and out of, like, a creative mood. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I feel <laughs> that. I feel that. Uh, oh, Missy says, uh, no one says a woman nurse. No one says a woman mechanic or a woman doctor. Why does society feel like they should say a woman welder? I right. I totally agree. What that is so true. About? I agree with that. I agree with it. So it is true. It is true. You don't hear that, you know? I feel like sometimes people, um, yeah. What do, I want to know too, Missy, what do you mean by photo ready? Who said that? The more Sparks or whatever said, what about less photo ready ladies that weld? Well, would love to see more of them as ambassadors. I don't understand what that but means. But see, I, I, I completely get that too. Like more, um, I, no, I, I understand that question. So like more, um, but see, that's the thing. Like if you go into my classroom, there's no women. So that's the kind of thing is we're trying to make like women welders as a norm because you just don't yeah. see them. You know, like if you come yeah. into my classroom, I'm going to take pictures of you. I don't care if you're a man, woman, or dog. I'm taking pictures and I'm going to make a TikTok and I'm going to post it. <laughs> I'm going to highlight you. But that's the right. problem. Is there's a deficit right now. We don't necessarily see women. Um, 
And I'm certainly not wearing makeup like this in class because it's just going to melt off. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad for your face. I actually have mascara on because I'm super fancy right now. Um, yeah. But no, I... I oh, someone, someone said, what music do you listen to? Reapers, Realm of Weld, and Fab. I like a mix of all music. I love Led Zeppelin. Yes. Um, Lil Wayne is my favorite rapper. Nicki Minaj. I really like her, too. And I'm trying to think. What else? I like a lot of, like, rock music. Nirvana, Pearl Jam. You know, like, I feel like Sublime. Who else? Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. trying to, like, put... I was going to try to put some type of, like, rap song that didn't have too much cussing on it earlier when I was uh, announcing, like, the last few hours of the interview. But they're yeah. all, like, non-censored, and I didn't want it to be, like, F this. and <laughs> Right? Yeah. That's funny. I, I would for my own. I don't care, but, like, <laughs> I wasn't trying That's to be funny. too good. That's uh, it's funny, because I love your selection of music. I, I usually try to Thank steal you. something off your TikTok. <laughs> That's fine. Girl. I'm, I'm like, oh, yes, I got to do that for the students. Yeah. That's fine. What is your I TikTok, by the way? Oh, it's Sarah Jean Jacket. No spaces. S A R A Jean Jacket. Oh, hold on. Unobtainium welding. He means babes that use their looks to get ahead instead of their skills. It's tough for women, though. So much pressure to look good all the time. Honestly, there is. There is that. But when you really love what you're doing, you don't really care about that stuff. You know what I mean? You're there to do the job just like anybody else, you know, like a... How, how do they use their... I don't understand how you could use your looks, though, to get ahead. I know at my job, like, if you were a crappy welder and you're... If you were pretty, like, you're still not... You, like, you wouldn't get ahead. Right. No matter what you looked like. Let's see. I, I guess that's right. Welding. What do you mean by getting ahead? Like, um... Hopefully, he can... Do you... This guy is pissing me off. Be positive. Forget offline. She meant something else. Oh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, what do you mean by getting ahead? Like, do you uh, really? I mean, if you can't weld, Thank you're not you going to necessarily get the job. Oh, he said on Instagram. Oh, I see. I see. I'm trying to read back. Sorry, guys. I okay. I guess so. I guess he kind of means like maybe girls who would like pose with a gun or whatever and really never have welded or something like that. Or like, is that what he means? I don't know. He hasn't answered back. And she, oh, Missy said Instagram does not pay my bills. Mine neither. Mine neither. I have to sneeze. Um, unobtainium. Oh, all the ladies that work for me dress appropriate at work. Well, I mean, me too. I have to. Answer. I have to. Yeah. Looks have nothing to do with skills. I don't I don't want this to be like an argument here. But um no, oh, no I don't yeah. see what you mean though. I understand what you mean. Like um uh, and it's funny because I was actually looking for this is for instance, like this is what I don't want to see is in the industry for women. Thank so you. we have a Hobart curriculum for my my classroom and I was looking for a vertical uphill remember uphill vertical uh for the students and there was I want I won't say the name, but it was one of the top three uh, welding companies. And what they did is they showed cute girl, she's welding, and you see the process, but they do not show an up close, which is what I need for my students. And then they go through and they have like, a, they're talking about the welder that they used and then, you know, um, the jacket and the hat, and then they do not show the final weld. And I was like, well, she's cute. I get it, but that was, yeah. there was no help. And it was on YouTube. So I was like, what was the whole point of this video? I get that, yeah. So it, I understand that. I get that, yeah. That makes sense to think about it that way. So what do you think about something like that? I agree. I mean, I, and I get that. I feel like sometimes, like, I'll I'll uh, get comments like that. And it's like, dude, go to my page and look, you know? Like, I do show pictures. It's just, at my work, our machines are patented and stuff. Like, I can only show so much. But no. I, I show the welds that I can. I, yep. You know, I do, sh and I feel like that is important because, you know? 
Well, you have a real cool perspective. I like the fact that you are, you know, you're trying to have, that is your brand. Like, you can still be girly, you can still be pretty, and your welds are killer. And you're versatile as a welder. What other processes do you weld on a norm at work? TIG, I'd say for sure. Okay. Other departments are like, like, I know my husband's department, like, they, they do, like, mostly TIG. And okay. then maybe some um mig but my department i'd say is mostly mig but i do get to do quite a bit of tig welding uh -huh. um they send and i feel like not every well actually maybe everyone does tig weld but i know like there was a point that there was only like me and one other guy who could tig weld well enough in our department so there's that but i know yes welder sent me a little tiny stick welder a while ago and things have been slow so i brought that in and i've yeah. been messing with that because i i will used to be d1.1 structural seal stick certified but i i didn't use the process every six months right. to right. uphold the certificate but i had no reason right. to you know what i mean so but i i like to fiddle with that i i saw to your what video else. to me that was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I just saw that. What was it? The past four hours. I hadn't even known. Yeah. I don't know when you had posted it. Um, my phone actually was not on when I woke up this morning. And I was, it took me like, I don't know, three or four hours to get it going. So like when I was trying to like post, you know, like the reminder for everybody to come in, I saw that and I was like, hey, because I don't normally see you stick welding. And that's, you know, that's your way to my heart is stick welding. I absolutely yeah. love it. I don't know why. It's just that's the process that I had learned in college. I absolutely just love it. Love it. So I thought that was cute that you had did that. Oh, my goodness. I would like to know what is something you'd like to weld that you haven't had the chance to yet? Ooh, I'm question. trying to think. I've done like the aluminum spool. Yeah. I've done stainless. I'm trying to think. I know that there's like a bunch of exotic metals and stuff, and maybe that would be something cool. I just always say that in welding, there is there is like so much to know that it's like literally yes. endless. Like there's so much you could do. So much. There's so much to know. So maybe maybe the exotic metals. I really like to learn new stuff. So Me too. And then I feel like also there's like uh, the other department where I work, they they work on very, very thick, thick material. And mm -hmm. I've always been saying that, like, I'd like to I'd like to get over there and see to see how I do over there. Because it's all like pulse welding and stuff. I've given yeah. it a shot. Like I've run over and like just run some beads or whatever. But I'd like to, you know, do like hands on and like actually like build something. That'd be cool. Now, what exactly are you building? When you, I, I see these huge face, I have no idea. What the heck are you welding and what's the process and what, how, how big is that metal? Like, what do you, what's going on over there? All right. So where I work makes industrial laundry equipment. So that would be like giant washers and dryers for like cruise ships and hotels. And they also even make like machines that like fold the clothes and a bunch of stuff. But I work in the dryer department and I make all the face plates that go on the dryer and the i'd say this is a wild guess here but i we our standard machine we make one that's standard and then one bigger and then there's one smaller that we make mm -hmm. and i would say our standard machine is like two thousand pounds holy moly maybe we more have, we have one almost one and a half minutes remaining oh my word how did it go that quick i know i know so, and what, so time flies when you're having a good time. I know. I so appreciate you. Okay, quick. We're going to talk fast. So normally, um, what is like 50-50% of TIG and MIG? I see you doing both of them. So both of them go onto these face plates? No. The face plates are just MIG. Uh -huh. uh, when when I get TIG, that's just like um, a little sub weldment or whatever would be TIG, but the face plates are MIG. I'd say I'd probably do 70% MIG and then like 30% TIG. But we've been slow lately, yeah. and I've, I've been able to just do whatever I want. So that's been I love the fact that they let you do that. That's awesome. You yeah, they want me to practice. That's what my yeah. boss said. He's like, practice TIG all day. I love it. Um, yeah. We have one minute left. So what is something that you want to tell everybody before we leave? Um, I... I just love this community. I feel like my IG family, I feel like, you know, it's not that often I get like the dickhead 
comments or whatever, but I feel like they mean nothing. I, I feel like it's just, it's like almost every week I'm getting like stickers in the mail or t-shirts or No! Thank you for having me, and I feel like you inspire me just as much as you Aww. say that I inspire you. And well, thank you. Best. I appreciate your time here, and I appreciate your feedback. I hope, if anything, we have 18 seconds. One person can be touched by your story, and I appreciate you being so honest and uh, generous with your time. Of course. Yay! Of course. Welder's a welder. Woohoo! Girl, Woo! I will talk to you soon. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you. Have a good night. Thanks, guys.